All right, now that we have animations in Maya that we have acquired from the audio to face microservice, let's see what we can do with them. So first, let's take a look at what's happening under the hood. So if we select the character or if we just select the, uh, the animation player, I can go into the uh, node editor and graph all of the input and the output of the player. So you can see that the player has an output and it's feeding into the blend shape. So if you look at all of the outputs that we have, those are all float values, and you can connect that to other things inside of Maya if you need to. If you want to drive the position of an object based on the on 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 like a controller of another rig or things like that, you can use the uh, the output and drive something else in, inside of Maya. But you can see that the, it's driving the blend shape nodes here, and that's why all of those blend shapes are being controlled by the uh, the player. So if you want to animate a bit more with the blend shapes, we'll need to think about baking the animation. Onto the blend shape so that we can take uh, we can we can create keyframes on top of that and that's what we'll do uh, in a second. But let's say that this animation player here uh, is important to you and you want to drive another character that has also blend shapes with the same exact player. We have a tool here in um, so you select the other character and you just say connect an existing animation player and it does the same thing as creating a player here that as we saw as before but it's connecting the one that we had already onto the new one. So I'm not going to do that here, but that's something that we have uh, as a tool if you want to, to do that. But now that we, like I said, we, we're driving the, 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 the blend shapes, we want to create an animation layer to do maybe some adjustments to the final animation. So what I'll do is I'll go to the uh, channel box and layer editor, and I'll look at all of the blend shapes that are here. I'm going to select all of them that are now being controlled, and I'm going to make sure that I'm the animation tool set. I'm going to go in key, and we have this tool here called Bake Simulation. Bake Simulation, I'm going to go on Selected, and I'm going to say from Channel Box, the ones that are selected here, and Apply. And now we, we have keyframes for all of these uh, blend shapes, and they are no longer controlled by the animation player. So I can, do, uh, I can do some adjustments on those keyframes, or while they are selected, I'm going to create a new animation layer out of that. And I'm going to go into that layer and make a few. So if I go to my base animation layer, you'll see that all the keyframes are there. And if I go to the new animation layer, I can go and make some some adjustments. So I know that some place in the animation, the jaw is a bit the jaw forward is a bit strong. So if I want to fix that, maybe here, something like here, maybe I find it too strong. So what I'll do is I'll create a keyframe using the S key here to define where I want that to be. And I'm going to go at the end here. So if I go about here and reduce the jaw forward a little bit and create a keyframe, now we have our adjustment, adjusted keyframes uh, for that. Let's say that I want the character to blink. Right now we don't have any blink. So let's say that at this point here, I want the character to blink. I'll say blink. I'll select blink left and blink right, which is here. And I'm going to create a keyframe again with the S key and three, three frames later. I'm going to create another keyframe and this one here i'm going to set the uh, blink left and right to maximum set my keyframe and now i've got back my blinking animation and if i want that to be happening a bit later in the animation same idea i'm going to create a, another blink here and we have our two blinking so we've created some keyframes and we've adjusted our animation. Now we want to export that so that we can use it in um, in another tool in another tool than Maya. The example that I'll use here, I want to bring all of this into Unreal and see this animation in Unreal and be able to to bring other animation clips to Unreal so that we can create an animation system in Unreal. So the goal here is to export the animation so that Unreal can understand it. So what I'll do is I'll use the uh, as I've got my object selected, James selected. I'll go and say, I'm, use, I'm going to use the game exporter. I like the game exporter because if you have uh, animation sections that you want to export, it's, um, it's well suited for that. So in this case, I'm going to export my selection. I'm going to say export 0 to 75, which is good. The clip name will be um, Mace, Maya Ace. Whoops, Maya Ace is cool. And I'm going to choose where I want to save it. Got the export anim folder here, and that's where I want that. And I'll just say export. Export successful. We've exported our animation. In Unreal, we would like to have our rig neutral, not animated, as a starting point. So what I'll do is I'll open up my uh, original scene. 
and that's uh, AR kit not animated. It's basically the same thing, but with no animations, we've got James, we've got the blend shape set up, and that's what I want to use as my kind of my reference or my rig instead of Unreal. So I'll just say export selection. Again, that's an FBX, but I'm going to call that James rig. I want to make sure that everything is set up correctly on the export. Uh, I'm using the Autodesk Media Entertainment setup, so that's, that's going to be clean. I don't have to go to the settings. I know they're good uh, and just say export selection. So now we've exported the rig and the animations. We're ready to go to Unreal and import all of that. So in Unreal, we are in a blank project, nothing fancy, just a brand new project, nothing in it, created an empty level, that's it. So what we're going to do, we're going to import the rig first and then the animation. So if I go here and I say import, I'm going to select the rig. And when you open up the FBX import the options, a few things that you need to consider is make sure that we enable skeletal mesh import. The uh, skeleton, leave it to none because we don't have any uh, skeleton yet inside that we're going to use. It's the brand new one. Import morph target needs to be on by default. Sometimes it's off. I used, uh, I used it uh, quite, quite often before, so it's on. And the other thing is import animation is on. Now we only care about the rig, so we don't want to import animation. Apart from that, the rest is good. So I'm going to say import. That's fine. And now we have our skeletal mesh and the skeleton and all of that. So we do care about the skeletal mesh. We're going to go verify that everything is imported correctly. Double click on it. It's going to open up the, uh, the window. And if you select the second tab, the first one is for the skeleton. The second one here, we're going to look at the, the details of it. And you see that the morph targets are all here. Let's see if it's working. So let's pick jaw open because it's, it's obvious. So here we go. We have the jaw open. Bring it back to automatic. Now we have this rig ready to receive animations. If I want to bring this into the scene, I'm going to put it there. Focus on it. Whoops. Focus on it. And then we're going to bring in animation for this character. So if I, we only have one, but if we have like more than one, we can import all of them separately and use them on the character. So I'm going to import the Maya school. Now it's going to be different. We don't want to import the mesh. We do care about the skeleton. We want to pick our skeleton. Uh, that's where we want it to the animation to go. So I'm going to pick that one. And then we are going to make sure that the, um, the, the, the rest of the, the settings are correct. I think it's pretty much okay. We want to, uh, there's an option that I want to turn off, which is remove redundant keys. By default, it's on. So if any of those four options are on, just make sure that they're off. And then we can say import. And now we have our animation. If I double click on it, we'll see that our character is being animated. It's receiving the animation that we've created in the Maya Ace. Uh, we're using Maya Ace. So that's good. If I want to show this on the character here, I can create an animation sequence for this guy. I'm going to give it an option. I'm going to leave it to just the default name. That's the character I want to bring in. So James Rig, that's what I want to animate. And the only animation that we have imported is this one. So now we can play back and we have our animation inside of Unreal.